Everybody and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live and we're glad you joined us tonight. I'm thinking about this actually this isn't live for you. For me it's live because I'm doing it live but this is actually recorded because I wanted to start our program tonight in a little different way because there's a couple things that I wanted to show you and I wanted you to see uh, what the congregation, what all many of you did uh, for us on Sunday morning. I just wanted to kind of show you that. So John, if you would, let's go ahead and pan over just a little bit. And, and I want you to see some of the things that are going on. We have a whole lot of cutouts here of all your faces. And man, I was really excited about it. As you see all the way back, we've got different people cut out and things going on over here. And uh, I want to show you a couple of different things. We got a lot of people all the way to the back and it really, really looked cool. I want you to know First of all, that it was really exciting as the pastor to come in and see that you guys did something like this. This is really amazing and it was cool, but it's also another way of just showing that we're, we're kind of together in this and uh, that you haven't forgotten about the church. So let's go ahead and walk to the back. I have a couple things that I, I want you to be able to see that's, that I think are really cool, but we got a lot of the cutouts. So of course, uh, we have the uh, Green Bay Packer fans had to taunt me just a little bit uh, with theirs. Uh, you see over here, we got stuffed animals every, all over the place. Got a family that brought all their stuffed animals here. Uh, pictures of all of our members, uh, which was really, really a great thing. Uh, and then have enjoyed seeing all of it. Some decorated with t-shirts, different things. There's one, though, that I really want to show you. So if you come on back here, because this one was probably one of the funnier ones. And I'm not showing you this just because it says the real MVP, Brother Harold. <laughs> I liked it, though. But I want you to notice something right here. This is the Wyatt family. <laughs> and, and you'll notice right here, <laughs> she got cut out. Mia got cut out half of it. You just see her eye. But here's what she really did. She went ahead and, and drew the rest of her. Uh, I, I loved her self-portrait. So cowgirl, you did a really good job. I call her cowgirl, but that's Mia. And so I just wanted to make sure uh, you got to see that one, but also that you were able to look at the entire uh, sanctuary and see how cool it was. And I want to say again, thank you to everyone for, for doing this, for allowing your picture to be placed up. For my staff, who I know worked hard to put this together, uh, they did a super job. Uh, Larry and Susan, I think, kind of headed this up. And so we're real excited. And, and I just wanted to show you this tonight. So as we start off our Facebook Live program, uh, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for doing this. Also, send your comments in. The comments are being read right now. I am at this time sitting probably at Elizabeth's desk watching this with you. Uh, but we're ready to start Facebook Live right now. So thank you. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough of the sanctuary. I want to 
uh, say thank you to everyone who had a part in that. It was really cool to walk in and, and see everybody out there, all the pictures and the work that was done. And uh, It was just uh, very exciting and very encouraging. And so uh, I want to again thank you uh, for doing that and hope that uh, you enjoyed getting to see it. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to preach and look out there again and knowing the effort that our people put forth on something like that. It was, it was really great. So thank you. Uh, and again, welcome to uh, our Facebook Live program tonight. Uh, hope that you're doing well. Uh, what I want to do very quickly is the same thing that we always start off with, is I have three things uh, that you need to know. And so I want to take a little time to offer three things that I think that are important for our church. The first one is our M28 Ministries. As you know, last week we talked to you about being able to uh, help feed uh, people in need through the M28 Bridge Ministries. Well, we did that again yesterday, and I want to let you know that we had 347 meals served. And so I want to say thank you to everyone who had a part in that for working and cooking and taking over. And we had uh, Carl Patterson, Patterson and Patrick Sheeby uh, both stayed and served the meals and got to pray with people. And so it's really exciting uh, to see how God is moving through that. And so thank you, First Baptist West, for doing it. Now, we're going to continue to have... Uh, people continue to do that and so what we're going to be needing is there's going to be about 400 uh, meals that we're going to be trying to serve next week and so we're going to need to be able to do that. Are we, is everything okay? Okay, so we're going to be able to uh, meet that need. What we're going to be needing of course is uh, some green beans it will be the vegetable that we're serving but we're going to need desserts and bread, enough to feed 400 people. Now in the desserts it could be, I've got a note here, so it could be fruit, applesauce, pudding cups, brownies, cakes, anything that you want to do. If you will just call Susan Thompson or call here at the church, we'll get you directed to Susan Thompson. Her number is 678-9195. And so uh, please be a part of that. And we're going to be doing that every Tuesday. But again, we've had 347 meals uh, this Tuesday. And so that, that's exciting to know that we get to be a part of such a great blessing. The second thing that we need you to know is our summer activities. Uh, we've been looking at some things that are going on because of the virus effect that it's had on things. Our Falls Creek will be moved, it's staying the same week, but it's going to be condensed down. We're going to go Wednesday through Saturday, and so it'll be July 8th through the 11th. So that's going to uh, stay as it is for the same week. But we're going to be getting more details out to you uh, in the near future. Also, our cross timbers, as of right now, the week we were going, has been canceled. But Carrie had a meeting today, and they're going to be giving us information, and we'll know by what date, Carrie? May 28th. May 28th of, of some more uh, information on that on where we're going to get to go. So uh, our, our kid, Across Timbers Kids Camp has been canceled for the week that we're going. Also, our Super Summer for our youth, that's been canceled as well. And our Vacation Bible School will be uh, July 19th through the 24th. Now, I want you to understand, everything that we've scheduled here is tentative because the way things change all the time, uh, but we'll be getting back to you just as soon as we can. So our summer activities, uh, some of them are, are changing, but we're, we're going to try to do as much as we possibly can. Number three, the third thing that I want you to know is the reopening uh, plans that we have. As you know, the governor has now changed some of the, the, the uh, opening dates, and he's talked about May 3rd that we would be able to uh, churches be back in session, but yet uh, just be, I want you to understand something that just because that they say we can open does not mean that we're ready to open because there's going to be number restrictions, there's going to be uh, cleaning things in between services, and so one of the things that, that I want you to know is that I've been meeting over the last three days with uh, local leaders, local pastors state leaders and state pastors even today and our own staff and deacons this week and we're putting together a reopening plan because again folks it's not just as easy as to say hey you're open you can have church because we can't do that because I want you to understand what we want to do is to ensure the safety and well-being for all of our guests and our members and we want to be able to accommodate everyone that we can. Now I know some people out there you may be saying well pastor let's just have godly faith but you know, I also believe in a thing called godly wisdom. And so we're going to try to put both of those together, a godly faith that he's going to take care of us, but also a godly wisdom that he's going to lead us. 
So what I'm going to be doing is tomorrow I'm going to be meeting again with our staff and with our leadership and we're going to develop a plan that will basically slowly and systematically allow us to reopen our building up to people to be coming in. So by this weekend we're hoping to be able to get out on Facebook, uh, our web page, uh, emails, everything that we can possibly do to give you the plan that First Baptist West is going to be having. Uh, because we do want to be together, but we've got to do it in a wise way. And something also that benefits our church, but also allows us to be able to, uh, to function in a, in a good orderly manner. So I want to just let you know of those three things uh, that are very important to our church. So as we always do, uh, every week I try to have somebody here in our church to, to visit with. And so tonight uh, we want to introduce to you uh, two people that all of you know, but we're going to uh, reintroduce them to you tonight anyway. And it's Glenn and Gina Hinton. And so they get to be accompanying on the couch uh, with us tonight. And so guys, I thank you all for coming and being a part of this uh, crazy program that we have called Facebook Live. And so we're excited and honored to have y'all join us tonight. So I want to ask you real quick, how has this affected the two of you in your household? Well, it's... Uh, Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have often found ourselves saying uh, for the first time, we're enjoying empty nesting. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, and especially with the kids not there, we always say, and then there was two. And know, the, yeah. They come and visit or come on the weekend or whatever and then when they leave they say well and then there were two so it's, right it's just us so how, how's it I know both of you have jobs Gina you're a teacher Glenn you work for the city you're kind right. of a supervisor over a, a crew out there Gina how's that affected school but now that I know school is out well, basically for uh, kids going to school how's right. that affected you with uh, your job well I think that with this virus uh, taking place you know, you have so many people who have gone to work every day. You just go to work every day. You right. just go to work, and every day you go to work. And then uh, now that that uh, school is technically out, it's been really different to, yeah. to find myself not going to work every right. day. And, um, of course, now we're doing virtual learning, and that is that has really helped me get back into a schedule, um, per se. But it, it's really been, um, I found myself being a little bit more difficult than I thought it would be. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so so you, you're, you're battling, as I've even preached Sunday, about that out-of-school mode, in-school mode in your mindset. So yes. are you seeing that's kind of hard to get back and forth? Well, I, I think I just have always been a very, like, a scheduled person. And so when at first we didn't know if we were going to do uh, the distance learning, and then we did uh, find out we were going to do it, and just, just trying to get back into routine. But now that we are back into routine, I, I um, personally feel much better so, right yeah. well I know it also as a former teacher not having the students there when you're yes. supposed to have them right. is, is quite emotional right absolutely I mean uh, you know we were out for spring break and and word was we were gonna just go right back and then you know after spring break it was a week and then another week and and so you really do miss your kids and um, it's been really good to be able to see them at least on a computer screen but it's nothing like being in class yeah, absolutely and that's almost the same thing with the church absolutely uh, we're getting to see some people and they get to see us on on these videos and they get to see you and, and on the videos as well with your Sunday school but it's Still something about that getting to be with people. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, Glenn, about yours, I know you're a, you're a foreman of one of the crews here in the city, and I can imagine this has kind of affected the way the city operates, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it really has. I mean, it hadn't affected the work that we do because I'm actually over a division of guys that we take care of, you know, a wastewater collection system within the city. Um, where it has affected us is like our break room. We've kind of shut that down. So now everybody, you know, when we do our mo uh, morning meetings, it's out in the shop. Everybody's kind of spread out in their chairs and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, the mask, uh, we have them available. They're optional uh, mm -hmm. so far. If, you know, if you want to wear it, you can. And, and if you don't, you don't. That kind of thing. Uh, we have bleach, you know, we bleach our trucks and our steering wheel and the seats and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, when you go upstairs to our office, there's five of us up there, and we're the only ones allowed up there. Like the right. guys, they just 
come knock at the door or call if you need something. Somebody will bring it down because we're trying to limit, you know, the the exposure, if right. you will. And because uh, before we'd have guys would just come up and, you know, you'd have five guys in a small office going over something, and we don't do that anymore. Right. And uh, our uh, one of the secretaries, Judy, she does a great job of. Like every morning she comes in, she's cleaning everything, sanitizing everything, <laughs> spraying things down, wiping things down. And so, you know, that's different. Right. You know, so. And I guess with your position as a supervisor and the things that you're over, mm -hmm. you are definitely considered essential personnel, right? Absolutely. Everybody, <laughs> you know, in, in our division, uh, it, it was, it came, which we knew, but uh, yeah. there, there's no way we get to stay home. Right, you know, right. Because you got to keep the water and the sewers flowing, just like the guy in the streets and the, right. you know, all those, you know, public utilities and, and public works is, is essential. And, and you're one of those guys that no one knows what you do until you don't do it, right? That's correct. When something goes wrong, then That's they correct. know what Glenn and his crew do, right? That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you don't see us, it's a good thing for you. That's right, yeah. Right. It's always good news if you don't see the city truck pulling up in front of your house right. with a yellow light flashing and Glenn get out of the truck. It's <laughs> Anytime right. I see you, I want you to come and visit with me. I don't want you to come and be telling me, okay, here, we got right. a problem, or I've right. called you. Glenn, I need you over here. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I, I know life has changed for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so not only your job and members of the church, but you both teach one of our Sunday school groups, small groups. Right. And uh, I want to commend you for the groups that you have. And you guys have done a great job ministering to our Thanks. classes. Uh, one of the things that we've had to do is to go to a virtual class with, through our Zoom. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to commend you also because when I brought this up to, you, to everybody, and y'all didn't fight one bit. You didn't say, oh, I'm not comfortable. You right, said, right. whatever we've got to do, let's do it. I want to know, how has that affected you, doing it that way? And either one of y'all can share. How has it affected your class? Well, I, I can tell you, for me, the very first one whew, was way <laughs> out of my comfort zone. You know? <laughs> and I was joking with our group because, you know, I have a music stand in, in our classroom here. <laughs> Then I set my book and my notes and all that stuff, and I'm used to just because I can make eye contact with people and then look at something I've written or what I, my next question I want to ask or something like that, and it kind of kept the flow going. You right. Know? And so I'll, now I'm at, at the dining room table and I'm staring at a laptop and you know I've got my book here, and my Bible's over here, and I'm just guys, I am totally out of sync here. So <laughs> that really took a lot of getting used to. I think. What, it was four or five weeks we've done yeah, this Yeah, four now. or five weeks so, now. Yeah. Uh, I think we're getting a little more smoothed out, you mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah. how, how, is it, how, is, how have your students responded to doing it online rather than being in class? I mean, I feel like our class is just, hey, what do we need to do? And, and they've done it. Um, the first week we had, I think we had 36. Oh, attend okay. and so it was just kind of like we were so excited just to be together oh, yeah. right, you know? right. just yeah. just to see each other and right. um, so they have just really just come along and whatever whatever we've needed to do to make it happen they're very supportive of it good good so and they and it doesn't seem to be wavering right now right mm -hmm. are, are we kind of mm -hmm. keeping good momentum yeah, yeah I, th with I everything? think so mm -hmm. I think so we and what was really neat is uh, Mike and Christy Carney who were members here years ago when they were stationed here with Fort Sill, uh, they have since, what, about four or five years ago uh -huh. went to mm -hmm. Washington State. Right, right. And uh, so they've joined us a couple oh, of times. Awesome. So it was neat to, of course, most of our group didn't know them except some of the old timers like us. <laughs> were like, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah. kind of introduced them to the group. And so that was uh, that was pretty exciting. And then uh, Carrie, she sat in on okay. one of last week. And so well, we've had a couple others that have never been to our class, but this. Good enables them to join in, mm -hmm. you know, okay. so that's been pretty neat. Good. Uh, have you been encouraging your classes to extend out to people and invite them into oh, your uh -huh. groups? Absolutely. Good, yeah. good. And that, that's one of the things I think will really help is when they begin to extend out. Now, one of the things I want to explain to everybody is, again, that if you'll go to our, uh, our web page, that on there is a list of all of our, I think we have six Sunday school classes, six small groups that are doing this. If you'll just say, and we've got it to where, if you'll just go down and, and say Glenn and Gina's name is on the, uh, on the, on the line, you click it, and it, you don't have to do anything else. It'll take you directly to your site to where right. you're doing it. Now, do y'all do anything like you, you, you have, it, have your room open or the, the time open early, right? So yes. about what time do y'all normally? At 9.15. 
okay. uh, is when we open it up and we have several people just come and we just are trying to catch up with each other and how was your week and, and that kind of thing. And um, then about 9.30, we open in prayer and get started and then uh, we like to end with prayer requests and praises. Okay, so. good, good. And so everybody seems to be responding well to that. Absolutely. All right. Well, and then, so what I want to encourage you is that if you'd like to attend Glenn and Gina's class, they'd love to have you. Absolutely. Uh, all you have to do is, again, go to our web page. Uh, go down to Glenn and Gina Hinton and hit their name and at 9.15 mm -hmm. uh, and if you go on at 9 o'clock it'll, it'll say the meeting is about to occur but the teacher will let you in or the leader will let you in. So you can even go in there earlier to make sure you're good but at 9.15 they'll, they'll come on. You can participate in that class. So we want to encourage you not only to do it yourself but in, uh, if you know people that aren't able to go to a, a small group because of some of them aren't able to do this then we want to encourage people to jump in there and hopefully right. we'll see more people joining in on your class yeah. okay good so uh, again i appreciate your spirit of doing that because i know as you said <laughs> way out of our comfort zone right. way out of our right. comfort zone right. uh, everything that we're doing so far mm -hmm. has been out of all of our comfort zones but i believe god's really going to to do some great work yes. well I, what i want to do is I always the last thing that i always try to do with when i have people in here or, or online i like to ask is there something that god's been dealing with you on through this time, either of you, both of you can sh maybe share something that through this last five weeks that God has shown you something and maybe even a verse that you've held on to. So. You know, I think for for us and um, with Glenn working every day and, and me staying home, it's literally like when he comes home and I hear that garage door, I jump <laughs> up and I like run out and it's another human being. And, and, um, <laughs> And I mean that's the truth. And uh, besides the fact I love I love seeing him come home, but um, I feel like it's like we are really encouraged not to go anywhere, but to right. stay home. And where we were always just busy, busy, busy. And so God just continues to lay on my be still and know that I'm God. Right. And um, and that just that verse has just meant so much to me um, in the last five weeks. Be still and know that I'm God. And literally, we, we are having to be still. There's right. really no place to go, right. and, and you can't be with people. And so that has meant a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what about you, Glenn? Uh, you know, I, that's the same verse that was coming to my mind. Good. Uh, that God has been playing with me, um, not just because of, you know, things happening at church and the virus and so forth. I mean, that obviously is a big part of it. But in, in my line of work, um, you know, and we've talked about it before. It's a rainy season, uh, right? And uh, I don't like the rain. She loves the storms, but <laughs> rain bad means different know. things for yeah, both of you, right? right? Yeah. That's right. Well, when I was an inspector, rain was great because then no contractors were working. I just come home early. But you know, now if it's raining totally too different. much, yeah, I'm staying late and, and whatnot. So uh, that's that's one part of it that, that God's really brought me through. But uh, just that, and and you know with what's going on right now and I always encourage people um, you know God's still in control and, and God is sovereign and you know he didn't say oh a coronavirus oh man I, I forgot I forgot about that or whatever right. you know God's like he knew and there, he's got a plan and a purpose in everything That's Amen. Right. And, and even though you know we don't get to meet you know like this in the building uh, with the whole church family because well, that's what we miss the most is our church family. Sure, absolutely. And like that day I come in here and saw you, Linda and Elizabeth, like, oh, it's church family. <laughs> you know, miss church family. Um, but I, I'm just, I'm thankful to you and, and others that started this live stream because another thing like we shared is I thought, do we really need to do that? And, and I'm so glad you guys went with doing that because it set us up. That's right. right. To do what we're doing. Amen. And Amen. I, I, I do remember that first Sunday you know, with laptops on, and oh, there's Katie, and there's Pat, and oh, hey, Bill, and you know, because you hadn't seen them in weeks, right? You know, right. and and uh, there was even more quarantine than there. It, you know, it's eased a little bit, not much, but right. a little bit. But uh, it was just great to see everybody. Yeah, amen. You know, you know one of the things that uh, we've had a few people to come in that are like helping with the meal and come in and pick up pans right. or bring desserts or whatever, and. Uh, almost unanimously every time somebody walks in of course I hear the door and I, I go oh, who's here who's here yeah, right, uh, right. 
But almost unanimously, every one of them has looked and said, man, it feels good just to walk into this Amen. building. Amen. So there's something good. special about this place. And right. we're, we're excited that what God is doing, uh, we miss each other, but I know God's got us. Uh, yes. And, and yes. you know, you, you, that, that old saying, you don't know what you have until it's gone. That's right. I yeah, think, man, yeah. when, when we are able to meet back, <laughs> right. it's going to be a... Can you imagine what heaven's yeah. going to be like oh, one day? Yeah, if right. we're excited about meeting each other here, just think. So anyway, yeah. I, I, I could talk to y'all forever. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but I, I want to thank y'all for coming, and right. uh, you you both are an inspiration to me as the pastor and as friend, and to uh, to our church. And I thank you for everything that you're doing for the city, for the kids at school, for for our church, for your Sunday school class, and uh, I just thank you for coming tonight. And spending some of your evening with us, and uh, I hope that you have enjoyed being here. I've enjoyed having oh, yeah. you. Uh, do you mind if I pray over you real quick, Absolutely. and then then, then we'll we'll let you escape the couch? <laughs> All right. But thank you again for coming and yeah, doing this, Father. In Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for this night. God, I thank you that uh, Glenn and Gina gave of their evening to come and to be a part of uh, of this uh, live stream. Uh, and Lord, I just pray that you would just Continue to strengthen them together, strengthen them in, as individuals. Allow them, Lord, to be still. Mm -hmm. Be still and know that you're God and that you're going to bless them and their, and their families. That, God, you're going to be able to um, do great things through them. I thank you for their faithfulness to their positions, of their secular jobs. But, Lord, I also thank you for their commitment to teaching in Sunday school and ministering to the people they minister to. And God, I pray that you would continue to use them in a great way and let them see, Lord, the, the fruits of their labor mm -hmm. and just, Lord, seeing lives being able to be changed. And we again thank you for all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you all again. And uh, you. just love you all. And, and it's, it's great to have you here tonight. And just to visit, like I said, we could go on and on. Oh, yeah, I could go sure forever. Could. But <laughs> I guess we better better move on. we got a few other things to do. Sure. But thank you all for, for you. being here tonight. Thank God you bless you. Welcome. So what I want to do now is we have a special uh, thing that we're going to do tonight, a new segment. And what I'm trying to do is have new segments all the time. I don't want to do the same thing every Wednesday night, I want to kind of keep it fresh. Tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to start a new segment that every once in a while throughout the times that we're still, go, uh, still going to be doing this is called Unsung Heroes. Those are people who don't get the recognition. Maybe they're behind the scenes. And, and I understand as pastor, I get to be out in front and, and a lot of things I get directed. Oh, great job, great job. But, you know, there's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes. And so tonight we're going to have some unsung heroes. And I want you to watch this video as I've interviewed two very special people to me and two very special people to this church. And I hope you enjoy this new segment. Hi, I want to introduce a new segment tonight that we're going to be doing throughout the summer. And it's going to be called Unsung Heroes. Now, with Unsung Heroes, what I want to do is I want to bring attention to people who kind of work behind the scenes that really don't get a whole lot of credit. And we have a couple of people here at First Baptist West that do that. I know I get a lot of the, the face time because apparently I'm the face of First Baptist West. But we have people who really work hard behind the scenes that hardly get any recognition. And so tonight what I want to do is I want to introduce the segment of Unsung Heroes with two Unsung Heroes of First Baptist West. So we're going to move in uh, real quick and we're going to talk to them just for a moment. They have uh, reluctantly agreed to do this with me, but uh, we're going to go in and the first one that we're going to talk to uh, is one of our secretaries. And all of us know, uh, Linda Whitworth, she is our secretary, and uh, she does a great job. Linda kind of keeps everything together here at First Baptist West. I, I create the chaos. She yes, keeps it all yeah. together. So, uh, Linda, how, how long have you been working here at First Baptist West? At the end of this year, I'll be 20 years. 20 years. Wow. And how, how's it gone for you? I like my job still. <laughs> still. It's getting a little less every day, apparently, since with me. Yester, since yesterday, yes. Yeah, since yesterday, and I came up with this idea. So, Linda, what, what are you actually, what's your main responsibility here, other than well, keeping me in line? That's the biggie, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm the financial secretary, so I pay the bills and make sure people get paid. And okay. I do the newsletter. So. Yeah. So, please read that newsletter. She does a good job <laughs> on it, and uh, but she does a great job. Now, the, the other question I have for Linda is this. Linda, wh what do you think when I walk into a room and say, hey, I've been thinking? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm the idea guy. The staff really does 
uh, all the work. But Linda does a super job, and she's a joy to work with, and, and I'm blessed to have her here. And, and Linda, thank you for just letting us see you. You're one of the unsung heroes of First Baptist West. Because <laughs> I get the credit, you all do all the work. And so I just wanted you to say, but thank you, Linda, for for doing this I and being on, on with us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the next one is let's move into Linda's been here for a long time. We're going to come into our rookie, our rookie here. And this is Elizabeth. Elizabeth is our uh, secretary and receptionist. And Elizabeth has done a great job. Lynn, Elizabeth, how long have you been here? I've been here just over a year. Just over a year. And what do you think about the place? I think it's good. I like it. All right. Yeah, good. Yeah. It, it's changing a little bit now, huh? Yeah, it's a lot different than when I started. <laughs> yes, yes. We have a lot of things going on. And yeah. Elizabeth, kind of tell them what you do here at First Baptist um, West. Well, as the receptionist, I receive people who come in. I greet them and I answer the phone and I make sure help people kind of get to where they need. Um, in addition to that, I do our bulletin, which I'm not currently doing. I also handle like Sunday school boxes, things like that. And I run our website and social media. So... Yeah, kind of a little bit of everything. Yeah, so she does, and she does a great job. Elizabeth was a godsend for us uh, because we were really looking for someone, and just she just kind of fell in our lap, and it was a great blessing. Now I want you to understand with this job, Elizabeth. I, I've been here nine years, and Elizabeth, I think, is like our fifth receptionist we've had. First one I came, Shelly was here. Shelly, good, good to have worked with you. I uh, hope you're watching tonight. And then we had Jill. Jill's from is in Hawaii now, so uh, she, she's no, yeah, yeah, she's lucky. So Jill, I know y'all watched last week. And then we had Elizabeth. We call her Elizabeth the first because Elizabeth was here. And then uh, after Elizabeth was Lorraine, and now Elizabeth the second. Now my question is, mm -hmm. am I that hard to work for that I go through that many people? We have a meeting actually. We all meet together and we just no, I'm just kidding. No, you're really not hard to work okay. for. Okay, no. all right. Kind of worried me there because she's like my fifth person. So, but Elizabeth does a great job too, and we are blessed. I hope you as a church know, and everybody out there watching knows how blessed we are to have these two unsung heroes. I, every time I tell the church, hey, if you need something, you call up here and we'll do this. Well, they, I, I always have to add in, you know, though, that when I say we are going to do it, it's not going to be me. It's one of these two ladies. So, <laughs> yeah, Elizabeth, yeah. it's great to have you on. Thank you and you me. are an unsung hero, and, and <laughs> I'm just a, very appreciative to have both you and Linda working with me. And it takes both of them to keep me in line, <laughs> but they do a great job. So, anyway, I just wanted to introduce you today to two unsung heroes of First Baptist West. And now we'll continue on with our show.